first 40 minutes there, it was a relatively even game until they scored the two goals before half-time. I'm sure that changed your, your half-time team talk. Yeah, um, disappointing afternoon today, but uh, a valuable lesson learned. And, you know, that is good in my eyes. Um, one of the few positives that you take from an afternoon like today that you're glad that it's happened in a friendly and that you're glad that you'll learn about certain characters and people's performances and their ability to take on board information and, and do what we've asked of them. Who's prepared to work hard and give 100% and who's prepared to be a little bit of a show pony and turn it on every now and again. And um, yeah, to me that's invaluable. So I'm not pleased with the result, but frankly the result doesn't really matter. Um, I've said to the players, you know, you worry about yourself, you look at your individual performance, not just today, I'm talking ever since they've joined the club. Look at what you're doing individually and make sure that you're giving me 100% at all times and that you're following pretty basic information you know, and playing for the benefit of the team and not yourself. Let me worry about the group as a whole uh, and the people that, that we've got involved with us, like, like Grads and Pete. And um, yeah, the, the rest will fall into place, but you know, Disappointing, but as I say, a valuable lesson learned and, and pleasing that it's today. And credit to Seven Oaks, you know, they were decent, they were well organised, and, and they were good at what they did without being disrespectful. Um, I think the scoreline probably flatters them a little bit because a few of our but that tells another story, you know, that needs to change as well. When you are 4 5 0 down, you should be giving more than you are at 0 0 because you don't want to get mugged. And, um, yeah, a bit disappointed towards the end that a few people were picked to, to jack it in. But again, you know, that's part of what I'm here for, we'll deal with that. Looking at the team sheet, it looked like a few of the bigger names in the squad were missing today. Are people on holiday or is there an injury list there? Or? Yeah, no excuses. I mean, we've, you know, we've carried a big squad for a reason. We've spoken about it before. And um, whilst I might not put everything out in public, everything is shared with the players and they know exactly where I stand on that. And if there's anyone in the squad that doesn't think they're good enough, they're very welcome to walk away tomorrow morning. Um, they all think they're good enough. So if you have got certain individuals missing, whoever steps in should be good enough. And um, if they're not, if I don't show it often enough, then I'll deal with that. But um, yeah, I think most teams are, certainly when you're playing a team at a level up, um, you are missing Sam Bailey, Richard Jimmo, Ollie Bennett, Jack Bancroft, Alex Nelson. If you're missing those kind of players, you're going to notice it. Yeah, um, there's no denying that. I think any team would miss miss those players, but the people that have come in to replace them, that's their opportunity, and uh, that's their their chance to say, right, I'm getting a start today. I'm going to make sure I get another one next week. And um, some of them have done that. Some of them haven't. Something that we haven't been able to replicate is that first half an hour that we did against Hashtag. Um, is this something that we really got to try and? and try and get back to a real quick start? Yeah, um, it's really difficult to do because at the moment, you know, the warm-ups and, and the changing room situations and stuff are so awkward that, you know, people are a bit out of their comfort zone. But guess what? It's going to be like that for a little while. And um, it's the same for the opposition. And you know, there shouldn't be any reason that any other team can deal with it and we can't. So, I, you know, again, not using any of that as excuses. Hashtag, we were brilliant, but it's gone. You know, are we going to be brilliant again next week and a week after and a week after that, or are we just going to dine out on that 145 minutes for the rest of the season? No chance, not having it. Like you've already mentioned, Seven Oaks, well drilled, well coached today. Um, is it is it important for you to get these sort of tests out of the way early? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. You know, we deliberately want to play against um, good sides, and we know that they will test us fitness wise, and we will learn more as opposed to playing without being disrespectful, playing teams two, three, four divisions below where we're going to see all of the ball and you don't really learn an awful lot. So, um, yeah, we've deliberately made it hard. Um, and the boys shouldn't beat themselves up too much about it. You know, I'll, I'll take that on my shoulders. Um, no one's ever pleased when you go home and you lose four, five, six nil. Um, but if we're stronger for it in the long run, then it serves a purpose. Say no names, I've just seen a few of the boys say bye to you and apologise. Is it sort of pleasing that they take it personal? It seemed like there's some remorse there, people upset with their individual performances. Is that not a positive, but it at least shows that they care and they might not have the, be the best Saturday night this evening? Yeah, I want it to hurt, but, but you, you then need to act on that. You know, it, it serves no purpose if, if they didn't dish out the same crap next week there are certain people apologising for their performances that probably don't deserve to be apologising they've probably actually done their job 
and they're probably looking at the score and just assuming they haven't. Um, and that's why I say people should look at their individual performances and make a judgement solely on that. And as the collective, that's what the management are there for. Um, and they have to remember the teams at the level that we're playing. You know, Seven Oaks, Mickey's been in charge of Seven Oaks for four or five years. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's got a solid group of boys around him that know exactly what is expected week in, week out, and they're well drilled. Um, we haven't got that, but we need, we need to get that. And it will only come with time. Um, but we need to make that happen as quickly as possible. But yeah, I'm pleased. You know, when somebody's substituted, they're pissed off about it. Good, it shows they care. So yeah, I, I am pleased that they care, but they need to act on that, and they need to act on that immediately. The season starts in 10 days. We haven't got time to push foot around. We're out again next Saturday, like you say, just before the season starting. What's the schedule look like? Is it two training sessions next week to work on things that you didn't like this evening, uh, this afternoon? So probably only one, realistically, and then and Kennington away next week. And if the lads think it's going to get any easier, it isn't. You know, Kennington are a division below, but they shouldn't be. You know, they should be in our division based on their performance last week, uh, last season. Sorry. Um, yeah, as soon as you put a cigar on the go and think that you're better than the opposition, you get found out. As soon as you don't give 100% against good quality opposition, you, you get found out, and, and I'm sick of that happening. So, yeah, we'll, we'll take that off. You know, not gonna not gonna go home and um, beat ourselves up too much about it. But yeah, that that disappointment needs to be acted on as soon as possible, and and there will be some, unfortunately, that will fall by the wayside as a result of that, um, based on volume of numbers and, and also quality um, everybody's had an opportunity now and, and if you've made the grade then you'll keep getting chances and if you haven't made the grade then obviously it's only fair that we, we do move certain individuals on